Uh, we are back with the uh, Cascade Control Lab and uh, Step 3 and 4. Uh, step 3, place PID2 in Cascade mode, uh, PID1 in manual, and we change the output of PID1 and observe the set point in PID2. So PID1 should um, be in manual, PID2 in Cascade. PID2, PID2 is uh, in automatic, I change PID2 to Cascade and uh, when PID2 is cascade, the set, uh, set point of PID2 is, uh, is uh, provided by PID1, output of PID1. So PID1, we change PID1 to manual, it's manual. And we change the output like uh, 60, we change the output of PID1 uh, to 60 in manual so the set point for PID2 should be 60 you can see here and uh, you can also see the trends that uh, when we have action on the uh, let me see this is the process value process for PID1 and this is the uh, this is the PID, um, uh, PID2 is in cascade, this is the action of PID2, this is the process value for PID2, set value for PID2 is constant, it's 60, and the process value for the uh, master controller. How you can see that if you change, in, if PID2 is in cascade, PID1 in manual, the output of the PID1 is directly transferred to the set point in PID2. That's the, uh, this, this, that's the um, quick conclusion. Now we um, put the PID1 in uh, manual, the output is 30, and 30 is transferred to the set point for PID2 and uh, that's very easy and mm, quick conclusion the uh, next step PID1 auto and uh, PID2 cascade and we change this set point uh, let me put PID2 in cascade it's in cascade PID1 in uh, auto so being auto and we so uh, we are in a full cascade uh, now it's possible for us to change the set point in the uh, master controller and see the result We change the set point to 80. This is the uh, temperature set point that we need to reach. This uh, green uh, curve should reach the, to this set point. You can see that we are reaching to the set point. The uh, flow loop is, is quick and it's following the flow loop is following set point and uh, process value in flow loop they are reaching to a steady state and the process value in the master is also reaching to the set value you can see that by using a, a casket control you can quickly uh, control a very sluggish process model now uh, let me decrease the set point here uh, like 50 50 again you can see that the mm, flow loop is uh, responding very quickly while the uh, master loop is somehow sluggish
uh, eventually we are reaching to the steady state. Uh, the next step will be um, PID in cascade, PID 2 in cascade, PID in O2, make a step change with the a step change in disturbance and we should see the effect. So we are reaching to the a steady state. Let me um, provide a huge disturbance like 50. So um, uh, the servants, um, as we uh, possibly uh, expected, the servants has a huge impact on the slave uh, controller, and you can see it, uh, a slave controller. A slave process uh, is uh, mostly impacted by. Um, You can see a slave process value is mostly impacted by uh, the disturbance. We had a huge disturbance. Uh, control valve is closing very quickly. Mm, a slave is uh, reacting uh, quickly. And we have a slight change in the master controller. And you can uh, conclude that uh, disturbance, uh, when we have a huge disturbance, a slave is mostly mm, uh, affected and uh, you can see that the master is uh, slightly affected let me let me mm, decrease for a small disturbance uh, uh, changing master or even changing a slave is not uh, noticeable and uh, so this is the uh, part two uh, uh, in order to summarize the uh, disturbance effect disturbance effect is uh, mostly effective uh, on the uh, slave um, process uh, it uh, usually affects the slave uh, process and uh, the effect on the master loop is uh, very minor compared to the change in uh, slave and a quick settlement by a slave will uh, help us to reject the uh, disturbance effect on the uh, master. So this is the second part and uh, we will move to the final part.